Hi, in this video we'll be looking at how to set up a Shopalike client. There are a number of ways of setting up clients, but in this video we'll be looking at clients with remote connections to a centralized Shopalike application server. These remote connections can either be over the internet or the intranet. The application server has the connections to the various database systems. From the client point of view, all that is required is that the remote connection be set up with the correct details. Let's start off the installation of the client. You can see that I've downloaded Shopalite and it's at MSI. This same installation is used for both the application server and the client. I'm going to double click on it and you can see we just select next and agree and here we have the installation folder. I'm just going to use the default and next. It really doesn't matter if Windows is 32-bit or 64-bit. Shopalite will work on both systems. During the installation process, you will see the data model installer screen appear. For a client install, no data models are required because we're just going to have a remote connection. So on this screen, select Next. The next screen to appear will be Client Setup. This is where the connections to the various systems are made. We have a choice of local connections or remote connections. Because we're connecting to a centralized application server, we can disable the local connections. I'm going to right click on local connections and select disable. Once this is disabled, come down to remote connections and select the first empty slot and come over to the connection details. Give the connection a description, then come down to the connection details. These details need to be matched perfectly with what's been set up on the application server. So you need to select the protocol. In most cases, it will default to HTTP, the port number, and just be aware that if the port is blocked for whatever reason, the connection will fail. Come down to the server name, and this is where we enter in the server name, which can be a URL address or a IP address or just the name of the PC. I've entered the name of the server, then I'm coming down to the code, the service code. This could be named anything. By default, it's set to MD Service 1. Before going to testing the connection, you may also require a password, depending on how this, the server has been set up. I'm going to click on Test now, and you can see that it's just telling me that my client and my server are slightly different versions. This is fine. Click OK, and next we'll be asked if we want to do a performance test. If I click Yes, it will measure the performance between the client and the centralized application server. If we're going over the internet, these speeds will be a lot slower. We're then asked if we want to enable the remote connection. So we're going to say yes. This completes the client setup. Press OK and close client setup. And you can see now the installation is complete. If we come down to the shortcuts menu, we should see a number of entries now for Sharper Light. The ones of interest will be Query Builder and Publisher and also the Excel add-in. Let's have a look at Query Builder first because this will allow us to test the connection that we've just made. If the application server has been set up for a single sign-on, you will find that this logon screen won't appear. But in my case, I don't have my Windows account trusted yet, so I need to log in with a particular account. I'm going to log in as guest. Once Query Builder appears, select Products, and you can see the various systems that are available on the application server. I'm going to choose one of these for a basic test. In this case, I'm selecting SAT Business 1. Next, I'm going to select the company. Then I'm going into the tables and I've chosen GL transactions. I'll pull out some columns and produce a basic report. And if we preview the data, you can see that our connection's working to the application server and we're getting back results. Next, I'd like to go into Excel and set up the add-in. 
close Query Builder and double click on Excel. You can see that after the install that the Sharpalite add-in has automatically appeared. Depending on how your Windows is set up, this ribbon may not appear. So I'm going to show you how to manually add the ribbon. Come to File, select Options, and from the list on the left-hand side, select Add-ins. Then come down to Manage Add-ins and select Go. You can see currently Sharpalite's not in the list. If we browse and then go to the installation directory, which is Program Files, Firelight, Sharpalite, Bin. You can see that we have a choice of a 32-bit add-in or a 64-bit add-in. In my case, I'm using a 32-bit version of Office, so I'd choose the 32-bit. If you did choose the wrong add-in, an error would appear and you could go back and select the correct one. You can see now that Sharpalite XL is appearing in the list, so I press OK and the add-in will appear. If you find that the ribbon is dropping out of Excel, just try starting Excel with administration rights and add the add-in. Next, let's do a quick test in Excel to make sure that everything's working. I'm going to pull back some data from the system SAP Business 1 again. As before, we log in. I'll select SAP Business 1 and set a company. And then come in and select the table, in this case, GL Transactions. And I'll pull out a, a few fields. And if I press OK, the data will be pulled back into Excel. Next, I'd like to explain about how to create your own custom shortcuts to the various applications in Shopalite. First, let's go to the Shopalite installation directory. So, come back into Program Files, Firelight, Shopalite, Bin. If we make a shortcut to mdapplications.exe on the, on the desktop and rename it to Shopalite, Let's double click on this and you can see that we have a menu to the various applications in Sharpalite. Come down to the bottom here, you can see there's a create desktop shortcut. If I click on this, I can create a shortcut to any of the components within Sharpalite. I'm going to create a shortcut to publisher. Just double click on this and you can see that it's put a shortcut to publisher directly on my desktop. Next I'll explain how to create a shortcut to the web channel content. Come to your browser, enter in HTTP or HTTPS depending on how the server is set up and then type in the server name and then the service code which is in my case MD service one and then a capital R for rest slash index. This will get you to the main landing page of the application server. From here you can view all the published reports but in most cases there will be a dashboard set up and the address will be sent out via email, for example. And then you can bookmark this. As you can see, clients can be set up in a number of different ways. They can have multiple remote connections to servers over the internet or even over the intranet. If you're involved in data model development, please have a look at the how to set up a Shopalite application server because for data model development, you'll need all local connections. That's been a brief overview of how to set up a Shopalite client.